Our last speaker has uh, a mechanical engineering background with more than 15 years experience in the power industry. His focus has been uh, in fossil power generation technology and project management. Within his organization, he has been general manager for power generation for the Gulf region of the world and vice president and head of sales for heavy duty gas and steam turbines. In his pleasant role, he is based in Indonesia and is responsible for the ASEAN Pacific Cluster with around 1,800 employees and an annual order income of more than 3.8 billion. <clears throat> now, in our opening film sequence, you'll remember we posed a number of challenging questions for the power industry in this part of the world. Our speaker has promised me that he has some of the answers to the questions today which I'm sure we're all looking forward to hearing. So let's give a warm welcome to Siemens Head of Energy for the ASEAN Pacific region, a thoroughly nice fellow, Mr. Marcus Lorenzini. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, thank you to the organizer to give me the honor and opportunity to give one of the keynote speeches today. These are interesting times for a company like ours. The world is in a fundamental transformation. The ASEAN countries, together with China and India, have been shifting the center of gravity of the global energy system towards Asia. Ongoing urbanization and industrialization are driving growth in energy usage. This growth continued even through the recent global economic crisis, which prompted a fall in global energy use. In recent years, ASEAN countries have placed increasing emphasis on improving energy efficiency to curb demand growth, reduce energy imports, and mitigate pollution. Thailand, the Philippines, and Malaysia especially have shown a very positive trend of a new power generation, especially towards innovative and highly efficient technologies. In addition, Thailand and the Philippines are investing into the wind power and have established tariffs that support investments in renewable energy. In this region, we will see continued growth and energy demand in the next decades paired with an attractive environment for investment. Companies like Siemens Energy are able to support this transformation with reliable and high-end technology. Our view on the energy system is changing here in Asia and also on a global level. Less than five years ago, many of us saw energy systems as a linear energy conversion chain. It would start at the fossil fuel exploration site and continued with power generation at few large power plants. Electricity would then follow transmission lines and distributing grids until finally reaching the consumer in a unidirectional linear flow. Today, we face a much more complex energy matrix. Electricity flows in a complex, multi-layered system of producers and consumers. Oil and gas production. Many economies are shifting their fuel from coal to gas, from efficiency to climate protection reasons. Power generation. More and more sources of decentralized generation are being installed with conventional turbines and engines, and increasingly also from renewable resources. Power transmission, reliable and efficient grids improve energy access, and cross-border links provide additional stability. In the cities, smart grids are on the horizon. Energy consumption, and finally, the change in consumers' behavior today prosumers not only generate their own energy, but also provide it to the grid. 
This tendency will further increase with the growing commercialization usage of uh, renewables. This power matrix is growing more complex on an almost daily basis. Of course, every country in the world has its own specific energy system. However, there are repeating patterns. If we cluster nations according to their resources needs and generation mix, we will define five major groups. Let's call them archetypes. The green pioneers countries are those who reshape the existing power market by the integration of renewables. For the sake of sustainability, they even accept higher energy prices. Greener pioneers countries are mostly found in Europe. Traditionalists, countries are mainly cost-driven and need affordable energy as well as secured energy supply. They mainly focus on central structure with a large scale and efficient generation. Exemplary countries are the United States and Australia. Profit optimization of fuel exports is a key priority of oil exporter maximizer countries. Like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, their main focus is on efficiency improvements. Energy hungry countries are fast developing like China, they have already built an infrastructure to reach most shareholders of the economy. Now they focus on rapid expansion of energy supply at a competitive cost. In our region, we count Thailand, Singapore, and Malaysia to this type. And even more ambitious are the next wave electrifier countries. They are still on their way to build up a reliable infrastructure. In contrast to energy-hungry countries, energy efficiency is a less burning challenge. The main priority here is to improve the access to energy. Countries with a demanding geography like Indonesia or the Philippines fall under this definition. For further details on this modeling, I can recommend a special report connecting possibilities, scenarios for optimizing energy system, which Siemens Energy will publish in 10 days at the World Energy Congress in Daegu, South Korea. Ladies and gentlemen, designing the idle energy system for a country is a highly complex task. Some economies are currently restructuring the existing energy system while in fuel operation. In Europe, the so-called Energiewende, or energy transition, boosts the share of renewables. In the US, we see a shift from coal to gas, while in Russia, the modernization of the age transmission system is on the agenda. Much of this is just reacting to the circumstances. In many Asian nations, in contrast, we can still shape our growth path. We have the unique opportunity to decide on the future energy mix, to design a sustainable market model with the right tariff structure and to plan the infrastructure ramp up. The key aspects of a balanced energy system are known in the magic triangle of accessibility, affordability, and environmental sustainability. I'm not a policy advisor or regulator. I'm not a consultant, but I have the privilege of working with a company that has set milestones in power generation technology for more than 150 years. So let me share with you some ideas on how technology can be contributed to provide a balanced and diversified energy mix. In many parts of Southeast Asia, secured supply continues to be the main challenge. There are three angles to look at it. Often, energy access is associated with decentral, rural, or island electrification. Expensive and polluting diesel generators often used to be the methods of choice. Fortunately, initiatives like the small power producers programs in Thailand are paving the way 
towards cleaner solutions. Siemens Energy has significantly contributed for the last SPP round as well as for the current, with highly efficient industrial gas turbines and steam turbines across the country. In the future, we will see more and more hybrid technologies. For example, re renewable sources plus a fossil backup, eventually complemented by battery storage. Equally as important as rural supply is energy security in the fast-growing urban agglomerates. Large reliable power plants as well as stable grids are needed to ensure an uninterrupted power supply. Coal, gas or nuclear? There is not a simple answer. But whatever technology we choose, it should be the safest cleanest and most efficient of its kind, because we have to act with responsibility. Growth at any cost is not a solution. We have to make sure that latest technology with high efficiency is chosen to minimize the environmental impact. Here at the exhibition and conference, you will find the right products and solution for it. And finally, we have to look at the reliability of the transmission grid. Interconnections are becoming a fundamental success factor of stability. Back in 2002, we installed a 110 kilometer HVDC line between Thailand and Malaysia, and the need for further investment is growing continuously. A 3,000 megawatt HVDC link from Thailand to China via Laos is being discussed as well as the HVDC connection from Sumatra to Java in Indonesia. The technology is available and it's robust. Take a seismic rift. A few months ago, we inaugurated a new three-pole HVDC link between North and South Island of New Zealand. All installations are designed for a one in 2,500 years earthquake. The day before the ceremony, New Zealand experienced a 5.7 earthquake. The line and the converter stations remained fully intact. When it comes to environmental sustainability, we first think of renewables. And indeed, renewables technologies have made some amazing progress in the past. Let me touch on two examples which are becoming increasingly important for Asia. Wind power has long been a pioneering activity. Today, wind power turbines are almost commodity. They are manufactured at industrial scale and with a high degree of automation. Gearless turbines reduce weight and increase reliability, and cutting edge aerodynamic design delivers double digit energy yield increases such as the three megawatt direct drive we are currently installing in the Caspasian project in the Philippines. Another renewable generation source shows important advantage, geothermal power. Its base load capacity gives a clear advantage over intermittent solar or wind power. As of today, the great geothermal potential of Indonesia and the Philippines is still widely untapped, which can be attributed to the geological drilling list, but also to permits, attractive tariffs, and financing issues. Here, a closer collaboration between the parties would be beneficial. Ladies and gentlemen, I can assure you that companies like us and I take the freedom to include our competitors, are assuming their share of responsibility for a balanced energy mix. We are constantly innovating to improve the performance and the reliability of power generations and grids. We are working hard to get the cost down, not only for products, but also the total life cost. And we are fast because change can't wait. But I also have some suggestions or wishes to other stakeholders in the energy field. 
universal access is a desire we all share with the United Nations who have made this topic one of the priorities of the 2014-2024 decade of sustainable energy for all. Equally important is containing demand growth. We must use all possibility levers in generation and the consumers. In this context, also, the adoption of tariff system should no be longer be a taboo. Renewable will have their share, and national policy should work on clear roadmaps to integrate clean energy. My home country, Germany, shows what can go wrong when you act first and think later. National master plans should also include reduction of administrative hurdles. Collaboration in ASEAN is key, and it should go far beyond information sharing. For the future, I would wish to see many physical interconnections between the nations. Let me say one last word about local capabilities. Siemens has a long tradition of serving Asia out of Asia. With local sales and engineering hubs, staffed with local personnel, we continue to strengthen our local and regional setups to keep a close relationship with our customers and partners. Many of them, or should I say, many of you, will be here at the Power Journey in Asia during the upcoming days, and I'm truly looking forward to a lot of interesting conversations on the future of energy in Asia. Thank you very much.